Okay, so let's move on to the last talk on the session. So we have Randy talking about uh, tracer embedding strategies from MIP star to MIP code. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So this is a brief hour of my talk. I first want to explain the different quantum correlations and the modern tangle we will be using for this talk. So when we first want to talk about correlation set, you should really figure out this as a mathematical model to describe a physical experiment for two separate players. So Micah, in this case, imagine you have two separate players, which we'll call Alice and Bob respectively. They are both given a input X and Y from some predetermined input set, big X. And maybe when they do some local operations, they will get some answer set A and B from the answers. And a correlation is just a joint probability distribution of output between the two parties given the input, which is usually described as P, A, B, slash X, Y, denoting the probability of outputting A and B, given the input X and Y. And this is usually represented as a real vector 0, 1 within this set. So since we work on quantum innovation, the most common form of correlation we'll see is something called the quantum tensor correlation. In this case, Alice and Bob will pre-share some states psi within the Hilbert space HA tensor HB. And Alice and Bob, having receiving X and Y, would make the measurement on their own respective Hilbert space. So in this case, Alice would make AXA onto her half of the Hilbert space HA, and Bob would make a measurement on his half of the Hilbert space HB. And then based on their measurement outcome, I'll put the answer A and B accordingly. And we call any probability distribution that can be arise in such an experiment to be a quantum tensor correlation. And we take use CQS, as a set of all possible quantum tensor correlation of this form. So a natural, another natural correlation that people consider does more have a QFT favor is something called the quantum commuting correlations. So in this case, instead of having a state defined in its own separate Hilbert space, the state is actually defined in one Hilbert space, but Alice and Bob's measurement must commute instead. And this is something called the quantum commuting correlation. And if you look at this picture really carefully, you will notice that, that um, if, if you have the quantum tensor correlations, the thousand bobs observable commutes anyways. So actually the set of quantum tensor correlation is contained within the quantum commuting correlation. However, due to the MIP circle RE theorem, the containment is actually not strict. Um, just to give a perspective why we kind of care about commuting correlations, imagine you have an experiment where the two parties are like far away. In this case, the model entanglement is often modeled as the quantum tensor correlations. However, as soon as we force the two parties to be operating in the same system and the same space, the model we have is actually not clear. By some QFT axioms, it could be the case that this is actually the commuting operator model of entanglement. And this is known as the Terrelson's problem. Uh, if you're interested in this, I recommend you talk to an actual physicist. This is like second information I and the information I got, but yeah. So before I kind of continue, I want to first introduce a concept of quantum strategies. For a correlation P, X, Y, A, B, E, we call the correlation, we call the POVM A, X, A, B, Y, B, and say psi to be a quantum strategy for the correlation P if using the set of POVM in the state, you can actually get the correlation set from the experiments. So in some sense, the quantum strategy describes the behavior of the experimenter inside these experiments I described earlier, and correlation describes what we, as an observer of this experiment, really sees. And the reason why it's called strategy actually has to do with nautical games. If you're in previous talk, that should be kind of clear. So we actually know a lot about quantum correlations. We actually know a lot about theorems with quantum correlations. And we prove a lot of theorems behind correlations that strategies that achieve correlations that are close to the given correlations. So one other example is something called the cell, robust cell testing, where if you have a single correlation, if you any strategy that's used to make a, to realize a correlation that's close to the given correlation actually have a specific form. One really noticeable example is something called the CHSH game, where if you realize a correlation that wins the game of high probability, then you must be employing a EPR pair. 
And this is using a lot of cryptography application that you will probably see later in this conference. A less known example is something called the quantum soundness property, which is mostly used in complexity theory. However, a lot of these theorems mostly proven the tensor product model. And the reasoning is actually kind of special. Not that, actually, it's not that special because, the, because the, only, the convenient computer model only really differs from the tensor model in an infinite dimensional setting. So these theorems are often hard to generalize. And when I say hard to generalize, it's not exactly because of some hardcore technique that's missing. It's really these like simple things, such as the Hilbert-Schmidt norm or the reduced sensor matrix that we don't know how to do in an infinite dimensional case. And in fact, if you take all three of these properties and maybe 300 pages of Cauchy shorts, you will get an excellent paper on non-local games. And yeah, many of these implications are actually not realized in the infinite dimensional case in general. And this is what this, our work is designed to kind of solve. So we consider a class of strategy called tracial embedded strategies. The way you should think about tracial embedded strategy is a class of commuting operator strategies that are really much contains the nice property from the finite dimensional case. So I'll first give the formal definition. Please don't get scared. So a commuting operator strategy is a tracial embedded strategy if there exists a tracial phenomenon algebra, a phi, in the standard form on the Hilbert space, such as psi is equal to sigma phi for some positive elements sigma. And AXA, Alice observable is in the algebra under this representation. And box observable, BYB, is in the commuton of this representation. Okay, that, that's a lot of scary words that I just blur out. So let me just give you a really simple finite dimensional example to really highlight what I'm actually talking about. So if you just take a finite dimensional correlation, a special better strategy has the following form, where this psi here is actually the maximum entangled state, and this sigma tensor i is actually the square root of the density matrix for the state for the strategy. And if you look at the sigma tau, this is just a really much the finite dimensional version of psi is equal to sigma phi, as I listed earlier slide. The tracial state is really just a maximum entangled state, and the sigma is really just the positive square density matrix. And for the measurement operator, you can, the house and boss observable, although being on their own register, must be in the same dimension. This is actually a really fancy way of finding the original saying, Alice's observable must be in the algebra, and Bob's observable must be in the commuton of the algebra. So this form is actually really nice because if you have a finite dimensional quantum strategy, you can actually always realize it in this class of strategy by just enlarging one of the Hilbert space. And when I talk about tracial and battle strategies, you should really think about strategies that are in this form with this characteristics. So as a main theorem of our work, we show that the closure of the set of correlation generated by a tracial and better strategy is actually dense within the set of commuting operator correlations. This means that if we can, if we actually only care about theorems that are correlation that's approximate to the commuting in a commuting operator model, then we can always assume that the underlying strategy is tracial embeddable, which is really easy to work with. Okay. Um, before I kind of go to application, I want to just briefly mention the proof of the main theorem, although I'm not going to go into too much detail because my advisor told me if I go into any detail, most of you would just go straight to the beach and start checking a strong zero, regardless if you understood the talk or not. So I'm just going to go to one slide to actually quickly explain the detail for the few of you who know small normal algebra here. The rest of you, bear with me, okay? And the main proof technique actually relies on very heavy vulnerable algebra techniques. Um, the main two ingredients are actually something called the consummate Takasaki theorem, which reduces the general vulnerable algebra from the to the semi-finite case. And the generalization, and then we use a generalization of choice RFE trick to get it to the finite case. Almost all of this is actually not approximation. The approximation mostly comes from getting the state into the right form. Um, by because we require the state to be normal and kind of have this positive element attached behind it. Okay, that's the evil normal algebra slide. If you stop paying attention, you can repay attention now. Okay, just the application. So as you can kind of tell by the title of the talk, the, this theorem is mostly used to, exp 
to work on the complexity of MIP code. So just briefly recapping what Kieran said last presentation, in this case, the complexity of MIP code is played between one, one verifier who's polynomial time bounded and also two provers who are unbounded but could be dishonest. In this case, uh, the prover would send one round of message to the two provers and get one round answer back. And they're also allowed to share the commuting operator model entanglement in the MIP code model. Now, if you squint at this picture really carefully, you will see another object called non-local game. And in fact, the complexity of this, com this complexity class is precisely described by, uh, by the problem of approximating the optimal commuting operator success rate given a non-local game. And it's conjectured in the original MIP star equals RE paper that this is equivalent to co-RE complexity class. And due to the main theorem, when working with MIP code, this is actually equivalent of approximately the optimal success rate over tracial battle strategies instead of general commuting operator strategies, where we recall the tracial battle strategy is a much nicer strategy to work with. And because of this, we can actually generalize a lot of techniques from the MIP star equals RE paper to the MIP code model. Um, just to give a two quick examples, one of the first one is actually something called the rounding theorem. Um, just really quickly, a correlation is synchronous. If given the same input, they will always output, give the same output. And this is actually a really well-studied set of correlation that's mostly by the peer community, but it also plays a very key part in the MIP star equals RE proof. And in connecting these two, in the MIP star equals RE theorem, the way they use it is by mostly connecting the synchronous correlation to a class of correlation called a delta almost synchronous correlation, where instead of have requiring Alice and Bob to output the same answer given the same question, they can sometimes screw up with maybe a delta percentage of the time. And the rounding theorem is, uh, roughly speaking, is saying, can almost all delta synchronous correlation be approximated by a precise synchronous correlation? And this is actually proven to be true by Thomas Vidic and Connor Porbat independently in the tensor product case. And because of the fact that we have this really nice class of strategy, and because of this nice class of strategy that approximates the commuting operator strategies, we can actually just take Thomas Vidic's argument and just reprove the result for the commuting operator case really straightforwardly. A second result that we show is something called the robust self-testing. So as I kind of mentioned earlier really quickly, self-testing is a concept where you feel correlations, any strategy that realizes correlation are unique in some sense, in this case, up to some partial isometry. Unfortunately, self-testing is not actually a small develop. There's one really nice operator algebraic formulation that's done by Yu Ming, Wilhelm Sostra, and rich people, but the when, if we want to use this in the MIP star context, we really care about something called a robust self-testing, where instead of having an exact correlation, you want all strategy that approximates such correlation should be close under the L2 norm. And because we don't really have a trace in the general commuting operator model, this is actually unclear in the commuting operator model. So what we did is actually we proved a robust self-testing theorem for tracial metal strategy instead. Um, the proof actually relied on something called the the state-dependent Gauss autonomy theorem that was originally used by Thomas Vidic. And because we have the Doshio trace and density matrix, we can generalize this for the commuting operator case. In fact, we have a reduced statement that roughly looks like this, where if you succeed, if a trigger in battle strategy succeed with the poly basis test with probably one minus epsilon, then there exists two partial isometries VA, VB, such that they have this sort of commuting relationship and when you apply this to the state, it's actually a polynomial time close to the to EPR append to some auxiliary states. So just for the specialists out here, when I say this weird commuting relationship, this is really a fancy way of saying these two isometries actually act on the different space. But unfortunately, this is only one tensor factor. They are kind of commuting in the same space. And the second special knows that since this is, could potentially be infinite, the auxiliary space down here actually could be potentially infinite dimensional. And that's the end of my talk. Just to kind of do a quick recap, I treasure battle strategies are a class of strategy 
community operator strategies with many of the similar nice property to the finite dimensional tensor product strategies. And because generating better strategies also generate a set of correlations that are dense within these set of commuting operator correlations. And because of these two facts, we can use this to create a framework to lift many of the theorems from the tensor product model to the commuting operator model. And if you're interested in my paper, here's a, a QR code to my archive link. Thank you for your attention. Questions? Uh, sorry, maybe a bit of a dumb question, but so with your proof techniques, you can get a lot of analogies from the commuting operator case to the tensor product case. But if you are going to show equality to core RE rather than RE, where do you expect the distinction is going to happen in some sense? Something must be different, right? Um, because the, in the MIP code, you really only care about the approximation or quantum correlations. So in this case, even a dense set of strategy is mostly fine, which is why you can kind of abuse the fact that you, this strategy has nice form. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Right, but in some sense, like, you know, not everything would translate immediately, right? Because you, or like exactly rather, because you expect to get co-RE in the end here instead yep. of RE. So was that a principal reason for expecting this in the first place, for example? Um, so if you look at this from the, uh, the verifier's perspective, he doesn't actually know the measurement operator or anything like that. He only sees a correlation set, right? Mm -hmm. So in some sense, if you have a correlation set that approximates things, this is fine. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, maybe I'll discuss it. Okay, let's discuss that's offline, yeah. Maybe a related question. So, okay, in this quest for proving MIP co equals co RE, is there uh, some intermediate question? For example, they had the next is in MIP star, right? So is there something similar in this setting? Um, yes, I didn't actually mention this as part of my result, but because of this rounding theorem, it's actually also show that the quantum load individual, load individual degree test is actually sound in the Trisha and Battle strategies. Since you can actually use approximation, this also shows that NEX is actually, NEXP is also inside MIP code. However, this is not too surprising since we expect that might be close as equal to co RE, which is much bigger. More questions? So sorry, going back to so then the the best lower bound on MIP co now is uh it's Nix. is Nix, but yep. that you just proved. Okay. Any other question? If not, let's thank Randy again.